Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the star that you see on the screen right now. This is a record holder for being the coolest, temperature wise, star in the universe. Let's talk about this object and welcome to What The Math. Now it doesn't really have a cool name just yet, as a matter of fact it only has a numerical designation and this is a star we discovered only a few years ago, but it's currently known as 2 mass J05233 14030. This particular object um, is not very far away from Earth, it's only about 40 light years away from us and we discovered it completely by accident. As you can imagine, because it is so cool, as in like it's actually cold for a star, um, it doesn't produce a lot of light and because of this it's actually kind of hard to see it with a regular telescope. As a matter of fact, we never saw it with a regular telescope. We detected this with an infrared telescope because it does produce still quite a lot of heat. Um, this particular object currently has a temperature of about 2070 degrees Kelvin, which is um, like what, 2300 degrees uh, Celsius. And this basically makes it even cooler than some of the planets we discovered. As a matter of fact, there are planets that are way hotter than this particular object. Now, all in all, this is actually a very unusual object. It's essentially at the border of a star becoming a planet. It's not a brown dwarf because it does actually have nuclear reaction on the inside. So it is an actual red dwarf. But being one of the least massive ones we discovered, it's also very unusual that it's just so cold for a star. Now in Space Engine, we actually have uh, some planets generated around this object, and here is the closest one. Now, as you can see, it's actually receiving some light, and it seems to have a moon orbiting around it, but even though it's relatively close to the parent star, so the parent star is right there, you can see it, it's very, very large, um, in the skies, the temperatures here are minus 190 degrees Celsius. So like way, way, way cooler or colder than um, even farther objects in our own solar system. So because of this, we don't really expect to find any objects here in the habitable zone or basically planets that would actually have enough heat to uh, have liquid water. But I wanted to show you that it is still possible. So so we're going to create the star in Universe Sandbox and I'm going to show you where the habitable zone actually is located. And to generate this object, we're actually are just going to start with a gas giant. In this case, I took Jupiter and we're going to give it uh, just enough masses to basically reach a point where it's on the threshold between a brown dwarf and a red dwarf. So it's kind of like a planet becoming a star. Uh, this usually happens when a, an object has a mass of approximately 7% mass of the sun. And so right around here, if we reload this, it's actually going to start reaching a point where it's basically becoming a sun-like object, a star-like object. Um, it's going to start increasing temperature really, really quickly. You'll see this in a second. It's going to start glowing. And this is basically a typical brown dwarf that's very, very close to being a red dwarf, very close to having its own nuclear reaction and basically being a star. Um, as soon as you reach a point where it's around like 7.5% or 7.8%, this is when it's actually going to become an actual red dwarf. And so this is where this particular object is. And its luminosity is like 10,000 times uh, less than our own sun so it'd be very very hard to see it even in the skies if you were like standing on earth and looking into the skies where the sun is you would most likely not even see it or barely see it It would be very difficult to see it and obviously it would produce very very little heat so earth would be basically a frozen wasteland now let's uh, make sure that the temperature is correct this is a little bit lower than it should be so we're going to change it to 2070 degrees and so in a nutshell, this right here is what this particular star looks like. It's essentially a very realistic representation of this red dwarf. Now, 
just um, for fun, let's take a look at the area where habitable zone would be. And as you can see, there's actually a habitable zone right here, right in this region. Interestingly, you could potentially have a planet in this region and even have liquid water, but most of the planets you saw were actually way, way past that. Uh, so if I were to place an object, like for example, Earth in the habitable zone, it would most likely have an orbital period of approximately 15 days. Let me just double check. In this case, it's 17 days. And it would actually receive enough heat, enough warmth from this planet to have liquid water. It wouldn't really have very bright skies or anything. The actual luminosity here would be maybe about one hundredth of what you get from the sun. So it would be pretty dark. As you can see, it is a very dim, very dark planet. But the infrared light would provide enough luminosity. And you, would, you could potentially have liquid water here. Now, we haven't obviously discovered anything like this uh, in this particular system. And we haven't really looked very hard. Uh, but because this is a red dwarf, there are other problems that we'll be facing here with a typical habitable world. And biggest problem here is that as any red dwarf, this is a very active star. It produces a lot of flares. It produces a lot of very highly energetic particles that very often strip the planet of like water, atmosphere, and so on. So not a particularly pleasant world to live on. But other than that, hypothetically at least, you could definitely have a world with liquid water if it orbits at a distance of approximately 0.05 astronomical units away from the star. Anywhere further would probably be too cold, anywhere closer would probably be too hot. But I guess the coolest part about it is that technically this is a record holder and it will probably stay a record holder for the coldest star ever for quite some time. It's very unusual to find such a, an extreme object and we're more likely to find an actual brown dwarf than to find a red dwarf that's basically so cold. As a matter of fact, if I move away far enough from the system, you will stop seeing it completely. It's actually going to disappear relatively quick. It's not a very bright star at all. But anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Now you know about the coldest star in our universe, at least as of 2018. In the next video, we'll explore something else you may have not known before. So do come back, subscribe, and click that bell button to get notified about videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.